Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to comment on Rishi Sunak's latest nonsense plan to deal with small boat crossings and explain how the plan cannot work from any angle, even the intended political angle. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Sunak's been making the news past couple of days about the small boat crossings again. His latest brain fart is to legislate so that anyone who enters the UK without authorisation, even if claiming asylum, will be automatically denied entry, deported and barred from life for life from entering the UK. Um, <laughs> proper, proper red meat for the gammas. But it won't work. And I don't just mean it won't work legally. That's obvious. It won't work politically. Now, obviously, such a policy would be in breach of the Refugee Convention. Any attempt to actually uh, legislate for this or enforce this policy would fail and fail hard. But the Conservatives aren't adopting this policy because they think it will work. They're doing it as their latest con job. You know, the way it works is this. Sunak is going to make this policy part of the manifesto for the next election. You know, he may try and do some work towards it, first of all. But ultimately, I mean... There's no point in being in a hurry to get this through Parliament, this side of the election, because what's the point? Then it, it doesn't work for the election, does it? That makes no sense. So he tries to make the election about small boats crossing the channel. He'll say that the country is in the grip of lefty lawyers and that Labour wants to throw open our borders again. And the only way to stop it is to vote Tory again so they can make America great again. Sorry, did I, I don't know what I was thinking. Make Britain great again, sorry. And why are the Tories doing this? Because they absolutely cannot let the next election be about the economy, because it's buggered. Or about healthcare, because it's buggered. Or about housing, because it's buggered. Or about education, because, well, you get the idea. So, although I'm sure this policy will work on some people who might be minded to vote Conservative, it will be a net vote loser for them. And I'll go through the various problems that the Conservatives face in trying to use this as an election platform. First of all, the latest polling shows that by far and away the most important issues which determine the way people are going to vote in the next general election are the economy and health care. Oh dear. Immigration is third, though a very distant third, but bear in mind immigration, first of all, does not just encompass asylum. Uh, it doesn't even just mean the small boats. And not everyone who thinks immigration is an important issue is against those trying to seek asylum. Many will be people who recognise that the UK government have blocked off all safe legal routes to entering the UK to seek asylum and so will actually be against the government's plans. They know that the reason the number of small boats crossings has gone up is because the government have shut off safe legal access to claim asylum. You know, and if we take voters from a military background in particular, it has been pointed out that we promised refuge for people in Afghanistan fleeing the Taliban, whom the West has once again unleashed on the Afghan people. In particular, we have not even allowed safe passage to the UK for Afghans who worked with the British military. Now, this is already a very sore point. The idea that Afghan refugees already have to make an unnecessarily dangerous journey to get to the UK is already upsetting for veterans. But the idea of actively deporting any who make it and permanently banning them from ever entering the UK again will be outrageous to them. You know, one thing that soldiers really don't like is letting their comrades down. In fact, Keir Starmer was making just this point in an interview this morning. Any Tory MPs who are also veterans, and there are several, will be absolutely appalled at this prospect. With the exception of Ian Duncan Smith, of course, who never saw active service. Then we've got public attitudes towards immigration in general. You know, there was a really interesting little chart in the Financial Times the other day. It showed that back when Labour in power, 69% of people in the UK believed that if jobs were scarce, that employers should prioritise native workers over immigrants. The article pointed out that Labour got themselves into a bit of bother over immigration because its own policies were out of step with general public opinion. But now the pendulum's gone the other way. And not just because the Tories have a much harsher line on immigration, but because public opinion itself has shifted as well. The same question put to people now will get only 30% 
thinking that native workers should be prioritised over immigrants. And consider the question only asks if jobs are scarce. So what is now already a minority thinking British jobs for the British are facing an economy which is desperate for workers. The Bank of England last year said we are a million workers short. Asylum seekers represent people with a range of skills which could be very useful in helping our economy to recover. But instead of putting them to work, we are instead using public money to accommodate them, upsetting Nigel Farage, but getting nothing in return. And the asylum seekers want to work. And then you look at this. So the BBC produced this graphic at the weekend. It shows the number of asylum returns. It shows just how badly the Conservatives have been failing since they took power. Labour were dealing with over 10,000 a year. And then it has steadily reduced to less than 2,000. And nothing affected it. There wasn't any big... It wasn't Brexit. It wasn't the pandemic. It wasn't Russia. Right from 2010, it has just been going down on a consistent basis. But we can do better than that. The government's own website shows just how badly they've been managing. There's a couple of graphs of interest, but there's one in particular which, combined with the BBC one, shows it to be even worse. It shows that the number of people entering immigration detention has actually gone down in the last 10 years. So the government cannot really claim that there's this invasion going on, quite apart from the Nazi era rhetoric being employed. The, the figures simply don't back it up. How come it's such a problem? How come it's such a new crisis when the numbers are actually lower than they were when it wasn't seen as such a problem? Because the government are not processing asylum claims properly. That's why. That's the crisis. Not the asylum seekers. That, the number of asylum seekers has gone down. It's Tory incompetence that makes the problem worse. Their own graph for returns also breaks things down as well. Better than the BBC graph. It shows even enforced returns are way down on what they were a decade ago. So the number of failed claimants being removed from the country is way down under the Conservatives. The bottom line is the Conservatives have presided over an asylum crisis because they have prevented the efficient dealing with cases. But you may say, well, you know, I can see how the general voting public would look at that and see things anew, but they're not going to see it, are they? They've not seen these charts. They're, they'll be oblivious to all of this. The Tory client media aren't exactly going to point it out, Phil. True enough, but Labour could. They won't plan to, of course. They don't need to. You know, they, they don't want to create noise. They don't want to echo Tory policies. They don't want to make the next election about asylum. Their five platforms, which were announced a couple of weeks ago, are the economy, healthcare, education, crime and energy security. You know, the policy areas that are actually important to voters. But let's say Sunak succeeded in making the asylum crisis of his party's making a major platform for the next election. Let us say that Labour were forced to fight on that platform. They have all the tools they need to expose just how the Tories have created this problem in easy to read charts that you could just slap on a leaflet and throw through someone's letterbox. All readily available on the government's own website. Source of data, government's own website. They'll have their own alternative plan, which Stan was reiterating again today, which does not take the form of blocking safe legal routes for genuine asylum seekers, but remaking them. And a policy of dealing with asylum claims quickly so that genuine claimants can be put to work, failed applicants can be removed from the country, everyone's happy. Maybe not the failed applicants. Starmer was also pointing out that the Tories already brought out legislation that was supposed to deal with the issue. But the situation just got worse. So the Tories have got form for saying, oh, this legislation will deal with the problem. Oh, it didn't deal with the problem. Oh, who'd have thought it? Labour have got all the tools they need to win this argument. If the Tories somehow inexplicably managed to persuade key voters that it was a top issue worth deciding the next government over, which currently is not the case. They can show with the government's own data that the Tories created the problem. They can point to previous legislation that the Tories claimed would solve the problem as having comprehensively failed. And they can point to their own plans which would deal with the issue without needing to abolish human rights laws in the UK, which few people really want. This is a complete blind alley for the Tories. They're going down this dead end because they're trying to flee from their own failures on the economy, on healthcare, education, housing, taxation, energy security and so on. They've ducked down this ally, alley thinking that it's an escape route. 
But if, if they persist in going down there, all they're going to find is Keir Starmer brandishing a cricket bat. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.